Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, a paper lantern swinging in the midnight breeze. And this is the first episode of my Transistor Let's Play. This is one of my favourite games of all time, even though I've only played through it once, and I've been looking forward to Let's Playing it for a long time, even though it will present some difficulties given as it has a narrator who constantly talks. Uh, you know, cutting into my own stage time. Um, so, we're going to jump right in from this, the game's opening splash page, in just a second. But first, I want to quickly mention that I have now opened a Kofi and a Patreon, so that if you want to, you can kick me a donation or two. Um, all of my videos will continue to be going. Will continue to be going up. That's a weird phrase. Um, for free and unmonetized. Not that I have the option of monetizing them anyway. And um, yeah, I just. I'm very poor and disabled, and I put a lot of work into these. So. At the very least, if I could buy a decent chair, that would be good. I'm currently recording from a uh, plastic kitchen chair, which occasionally gives me electric shocks <laughs> from the static. So yeah, um, all of that aside, let's jump into the game with one of the greatest opening lines of uh, a game I've ever played. Hey, Red. We're not going to get away with this, are we? together again. But sort of. What a night. You're still in one piece. That's all that matters. I genuinely love a narrative that's happy to just completely throw you in at the deep end. In Medias Res, no explanation of who you are, where you are, what's happening, who the people around you are. But where it's clear that the characters have a very strong idea. Um, and where it's, you know, they know exactly what they're doing. Thanks. Found us already. And it's up for you. Back, up for you to figure it out as you go along. So do I. Born again. Nice. Okay, let's go. Unmarked alley. East of the bay. I think I know where we are. I love that you can just instantaneously tell that the character speaking is the sword because he blinks <laughs> every time he says anything. I love that his dialogue is actually cut off by this uh, tutorial starting. Actually, I should mention now before I forget, uh, but this game has a New Game Plus cycle, and this tutorial is one of the only things that changes between the uh, original run through of the game and the subsequent New Game Plus run throughs of the game. Uh, because when you play through it the first time, um, this tutorial is... Well, you're seeing me play through it for the first time, effectively, because I did reset all of my everything so that I could bring you this. Fresh. Uh, but yes, when you play through it the second time, that opening line is actually said by a different character, which is interesting for various reasons. And also this tutorial um, becomes buggy and strange and doesn't work right. So, the main mechanic of combat is this sort of oddly clunky um, arena brawler thing with your four spells that you can cast, although we only have two currently. Um, and this, uh, the main meat of it is this time freezing mechanic where you can pause to plan your abilities. Hey, up there. Hello, world. Look at all that. We're on the edge of town, a hundred blocks away. Every inch of this is so utterly lush. I love that even the paving tiles reflect the styles of the, the architecture and the world and its design and all the influences it wants to pull in. There's the empty set. Still too close to it. We better get as far from there as possible. Hmm, empty set, hello world. There sure are a lot of computing references in this. Gee, I wonder if that will sort of be relevant. Um, I'm actually basically going to refrain from my usual habit of trying to avoid spoilers as we play through. I will be talking about spoilers all of the way through this Let's Play, simply because this um, there's a lot to say and this world is very tightly kind of coiled and the plot is sort of very... Block party up ahead. 
it's very we go. it's very based on interpretation and figuring things out for yourself. Um, but also, I don't have much time to talk uh, because you know I have to try and fit my myself around the narrator and the the frequent narrative segments. So essentially, I'm uh, going to talk Get about stuff here. all of the time. We're good. Yeah, we are good. She awake. Platt L, come closer. Disposition explosive processed seventy seven percent. Hi. You okay? I see. Sure. She wants to come along. We can use her. Intersection. Let's see. I do love the skill of the voice cast in this game. It has to be you have to pick a really good actor if the entire heavy lifting of your entire narrative is going to be based on a single narrator. Wish it was raining. Cover your tracks. So these terminals are all over the place and they connect into the city network. And essentially they're just there to enrich the narrative a little bit. Rain's not even on the ballot. Um, one of the amusing things about this is that... Um, this is a highly democratic society, which means that no matter what you pick here, you always lose. Warm and clear second place. Where were we? Watch out. So yeah, one of the fun things about these mechanics is um, everything is very positional, which means there's a strong focus on you know lining things up correctly to get as many. You know, I talk a lot about the conservation of stabs in the games I play. And uh, that is absolutely vital here. Gross. Not least because um, during the cooldown of your time ability, you are very vulnerable. You can't use most of your abilities and... Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's really the only change. You can't use most of your abilities, but that makes you very vulnerable because you can't attack or really defend yourself. You just have to run away until it recharges. You can fight without using it. Hmm, can I not? I can't hit both of these, can I? No, oh well. You can completely fight without using it, but um, you are at a disadvantage if you do so. It's often beneficial because your actions are limited in that mode to, for example, use Crash, uh, which applies a weakening effect, and then go into the um, slow-mo mode while the weakening effect is still active so that you can have more attacks while time is paused. Let's see what else. Response is logged 16,384. These terminals are the only time uh, Red actually gets to... Well, Cloud let's... Cloud-Bank Fashion Week not happening, huh? Yeah, it's almost like the end of the world should cause um, at least a temporary end to public events. Hmm. Hmm. Three days this time. Three-day extravaganza. We cordially invite you to our 67th annual event. Cloudbank's popular tradition will be at its most spectacular with your support. Um, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about any of this. Maybe next year. I think you're going to want to reschedule, she says. Ought to keep heading east. End of the plaza. It's you. I'm so sorry, Red. They took your voice. I couldn't stop them. But we took something of theirs. Hey, let's just go. Come on, just go. Damn. Young lady here to see you. I love that Red is incredibly characterful, even though she never speaks. Um, they do a lot of work with essentially her actions and her attitude, but the only time she ever does get a voice is in the text-based answers to the OBC terminals. Which is um, really useful because it lets, it, lets, it lets you give it a little bit more detail and a little bit more sort of specific understanding as to who she is as a person. Which, as we will discover, is resilient and defiant. Okay. Side street, due east. Through there. I 
think I know a place we could get a ride. So I really want to talk about this poster, but I might not have time. Actually, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's speed run some art crit. So um, a lot of people reference Alphonse Musher or Mucker, I don't know how it's pronounced, who is one of the um, iconic artists of the Art Nouveau style and period as uh, an influence on this game. And that's true that he was an influence. This didn't used to be here. But the much, much stronger and far more constant influence is uh, that of Gustav Klimt. I will talk about Klimt later because the Klimt influence is just constant throughout the entire game. Um, but I think the reason people are so fixated on, on Mucha oh. is okay. essentially that one poster which um, reflects that who I think it is. the um, illustrations Mucha made for uh, playbills and so on. Moyle, P. Disposition elusive. Processed 82%. Hey, Mr. Moyle. You in there? It's him, all right, but I can barely hear him. So yeah, um, I will talk more about that later on. Oh no. Cut off our escape. It's here that we see the first glimpse on, of there. the real threat that we're fighting. And uh, it's a pretty unpleasant one. Tough guy. Bring him on. So Jaunt, the teleport ability, is the first of our various I mean, I tend to call everything in games that you can do, like, that's a special ability, uh, I tend to call everything spells, because effectively they are. Um, they're just magic abilities that you have, that you do things that people can't normally do. That's not magic. Jerk. Yep, large Back cybernetic jerk. Hey. I love this, um line art image on the right. It is very nouveau imposing. So, um, every time you level up you get to pick a new function. You gain them as you go throughout the world, as we saw earlier with the two, um, I, they're not really corpses, because this isn't really a physical realm, but, um, yeah, so you can have an invisibility ability that lets you do backstabs, or you can have bounce, which lets you, uh, ricochet your attacks. I'm going to go with Bounce because I'm more comfortable with managing direct attacks, but eventually we'll unlock here. most of these, I think. What we're about to find out... Get that. Okay, you're in. ...is that... Oh, it might not let you, actually, at this point. So I'll explain this system in just a second. But first hey, I'll just go. do that so that it will let me. Yeah, okay, we can't actually see it just yet, but um, each of these functions is spun out of the sort of residual essence of a person, which um, is why our sword has just eaten two people as we've been walking through the, so the uh, streets of this city. As you play through the game, you unlock more and more of their backstories. Um, they each have three chunks of story about them, and there's, I think, something like 30 of these skills in the game. And um, the way they unlock is that each time one is used in combat as either a primary ability, a passive upgrade to a primary ability, or as a passive upgrade to the player, uh, you unlock the next chunk in their sort of story file. So what I'm going to be doing is changing my skills constantly in order to try and maximize the number of stories I unlock, but I probably won't see everything on one single playthrough, and I'm not intending to replay this game. Um, I mean, this is a let's play of the story, it's not a let's play of me min-maxing and winning the combat super good, because that's not really what I do. Um, but each of these can be um, used as a basic skill or as an upgrade to another skill which uh, essentially applies its ability to that thing, so you can mix and match them. So for example, if you add spark to another ability, it probably fragments into multiple attacks, or if you add bounce, it probably chains, chains between targets. Um, so for now, what I want to do is swap out one of the active skills. I don't use Spark very much, so let's put... Actually, I'm going to rearrange all of these real quick. I want Jaunt on A, because it's your mobility power. I want Crash on X. That is not X. I want Jaunt on A. I want Crash on X. Um, because Crash is your setup power, because it essentially makes everything weaker when you hit it with it. 
I'll have bounce on Y as a uh, as one attack, and I'll have breach on B as another attack. I keep I keep pressing the button uh, that I am saying in words <laughs> instead of the A button, which is what actually confirms where I want to put the ability. It's like how when you're typing and you start talking to someone and then you realize that you've just been typing the words you've been saying. Um, so that leaves Spark for me to uh, add into something else. So as you can see, if I plug Spark into Breach, uh, my powerful Breach ranged attack will shoot three, three arrows instead of one because it splits, because that's what Spark does, it splits things. The um, computery theming of this Good. game will become clear Just as we go on. Block. I want to show you something. Well, I say it will become clear, but this is actually one of those in very intentionally unclear settings and narratives of the type I really admire and that I tend to criticize people for being overly literal and granular in their understandings of. Anyway, this is the first place we see what these strange enemies are trying to do to the city around us. As you can see, they're trying to render everything into this sort of um, uniform, papery uh, existence. Okay, there's a... wait. Back, 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 back. Designation jerk. I've known I've known a lot of designated jerks in my life, I gotta say. So while it is all about managing your uh, ability to Oh fuck <laughs> It's all about managing your ability to fuck. That is um that's video games. It's not. It's not even this video game. I can't remember if I mentioned this, but you do actually have to be fairly careful about how you line up your opponents. You also have to be careful about the fact that muscle memory is a thing that exists, which means if, like me, you're the kind of jackass who changes where all of her abilities are constantly, that means that you are in fact going to find yourself constantly pressing the wrong button until you get used to the new setup. Oh, that's interesting. Ricochet moves me, uh, moves me forwards a little bit. Or bounce, as it's called. Now. Yeah, I don't especially like bounces and attacks, so that's why I want to get it out of the way earlier. I much prefer to add it to other abilities. Get away from it. One of the downsides of fighting the joke is that it can absolutely catch you in a corner and trap you there, which isn't a fun time for anybody, at least of all me. Was that enough to finish it off? It was. Here he comes. Yeah, those breaches will do some real damage. So, your skills are actually also your hit points, essentially. They, um... As you take damage, that bar in the bottom of the screen will empty. When it empties fully, what happens is that, essentially, um, one of your abilities randomly will break, and you have to go as long as you can without that ability. If you reach a couple of save points in succession, it will um, reactivate and you'll get it back. But it does uh, incentivize you to be quite careful. They're gone, but so is this whole block. Fun fact, the audio you're currently hearing was edited in after I finished recording the video because I couldn't edit out a big fat coughing fit here because I didn't stop moving the character like I normally do. Yeah, good call. Oh, thanks. That's our way out. One of the things I absolutely love is the lushness of the art design and how willing they are to just absolutely <laughs> go over the top and create so many different images for so many different places. You know, we never come back here, but we step into this area and it's a total palette change from the previous area. It's very different colours. And the amount of work that must have gone in to create all of these different images in different okay. places. E64 on ramp. Five blocks down. Take the second right. Do not turn left. And thanks for the lift. Hi. You turn left. Thought we were gonna skip town. We're going back there. You met these things. They do not have a sense of humor. 
track you down, wipe you out, and take whatever's left of me back to those two-bit camarada pieces of trash. Look, whatever you're thinking, do me a favor. Don't let me go. I love the dialogue in this game. It's excellently written, just like all of Supergiant's games, which is something else I'm going to talk about later. The uh, incredibly consistent, astonishing skill level of the work that these people output. <sighs> Poor bike. Just ten more blocks to the set. You always ride that fast? One of the other things I love is how quickly we care about all of these things. Maybe that's just me, but playing this game, they tell you nothing, and yet it's so compelling from second they one. Us here. Are they all upgrading? Incidentally, I love the um, skittery way the creeps move. They are just called creeps, but they do feel creepy to me. Let's go. Interesting. It looks like by smashing those... Well, they're not ice cubes, but um, by smashing the enemies that aren't yet active before they have a chance to become active, um, I'm actually able to... Oh, that's lucky. That one breach shot will by chance hit the bad cell on the other side. What are the chances of that? Oh, none, apparently. <laughs> So as I was saying, the um, so yeah, you actually have to be careful not to knock them out of where you are because it only shows you the state as it is currently. Its predictions don't take into account the ways the enemies move, either under their own power or because of the knockback of your attacks. Which means it is very easy to not actually have them. Um, we make it time too. Not actually have them be in your secondary attacks. There should be a save point just ahead. Not a soul. Hardly recognize this place without the foot traffic. Junction Jan is a good name for a restaurant. I love the kind of dineriness of it being set away from the uh, ubiquitous surrounding blocks. Ah, fertile ground. So yeah, as we were just told, that is the flourish. Why? What it does, I don't actually know. It interacts with some of your abilities later, but I don't know if it actually does anything in and of itself. A nice little other touch is that in addition to that ability to flourish, you can also press the other buffer. And Red will gently cradle her sword and um, hum along to the music. It's very tender as an animation, and even that gives us insight still up. into who these people are as characters and who they are to one another. They... You learn so much about these people and you've never told anything. And I think that that's... Starving. That's the sign of a really skillful um, narrative, if you ask me. Hungry? Grab a bite. Satisfy your cravings with complimentary Junction Jan's gourmet flatbread. Sea monsters really the only choice here. I mean, he says that, but I've always had a tendency to pick Mystery Jans, because why wouldn't you? But I gotta say, Supremo Deluxe is the best name for a foodstuff. Um, fine, I'll go with what he says. Yes. Just have to get back to your place before it gets cold. Note that it says that uh, this will be delivered in eight seconds. They're hungry too. Based on your different decisions in those uh, little moments, he will actually say different things, which I think is amusing. And in fact, the subsequent things he says changes a little bit too. Or change, rather. The okay, way for it to on. refill can be a pain in the ass, though. The, uh... I can't remember what it's called, but the, um, the pause time gauge. It does actually have a name within the narrative, I just can't... I don't think they've mentioned it yet left ourselves open for seafood flatbread so yeah depending on what you <laughs> depending on what you pick his dialogue changes there so he would say mystery flatbread but yeah um never seen gold walk cleared out 
yeah, uh, this is where we're going to stop today, because as you may or may not be able to hear, my voice is starting to flag a little bit. This is actually my second recording of this episode, because, oh boy, I've had some technical issues lately. Um, but I stuck it out and here I am, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you stick with me for the rest of this series. This is a really good game with a really good story and a lot of really good performances. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!